What they doing, YouTube? The skip. Coming to you live. Straight out of Real Hot Six of Quarter Candles. Hey, Slugger. I'm shooting this video by special request. Good friend of mine, close buddy, Wendell. He wanted me to shoot a video just so he could check out my orange barred Midas. Yes, I repeat, my orange barred Midas. I have one pure orange Midas in here, and then I have one orange barred Midas female. And I will explain that later. They both Midas. They both purebreds. And the fry are fourth generation. I can't really tell if the camera is really picking up on her pearl colored bars. And yes, her name is Miss Pearl. But she is sporting her pearl colored bars. They're real light this morning. I guess because it's pretty early. Once she started to really uh, get the blood flowing and swimming around because she's protecting her fry right now. You can really see the pearl colored bars. The vertical bars going up and down her body. And of course, some of these fourth generation fry will have pearl, vertical pearl bars as well. And some of them may have a dark burgundy blackish looking vertical bars coming down their body. And we call those the citronella orange tigers. But that's another story with that particular bloodline. And normally, I, I would like to add that my Midas, my orange Midas, Slugger, normally he sports a huge knuckle hump. But since he's been into his parenting mode, where he's taking care of the young, I guess his testosterone level has decreased tremendously. So therefore, he's not sporting that huge knuckle hump that he normally sports. And of course, his fans are a little, they're a little closed in right now. I guess because the babies are always constantly riding on his back and they're, they're probably nibbling on his slime coat which keeps his, his scales down so it's probably about that time for me to take these fry out of this tank look at him proud papa protecting his his young let's see if I can get a close up on these lateral uh, pearl bars on Miss Pearl look at her she's a beast Also, I would like to elaborate on something else. I have been receiving calls asking me what's the difference between a Midas and a Labianum's Red Devil. Well, here's a clear cut difference. The Midas, as you can see, front snout is round, it's rounded. It never comes to a point. Miss Pearl is the same way. And you can see on Slugger here, that is rounded and it's kind of indentured, it's kind of pushed in in the front. The snout is pushed in in the front. And Midas have a more muscular, round, chunkier build. Their profile is a little different from the uh, Labianus Red Devil. The Labianus Red Devil usually sport a more slender profile, not as chunky, and the, the knuckle humps don't get as big as the Midas knuckle humps does. And most importantly, the Labianum's Red Devil lips always come to a point. I don't care if they're wild caught, domesticated, their lips come to a point like an earl. And I'll show you a chart illustrating that, that differences between the two lips. Oh, he's getting a little testy now. I guess they're moving the babies around and he's making sure she's not eating the babies. But yeah, there, there's there's a huge difference in the Ampelopus labianums and the Ampelopus centronellum or Midas. Now the um, Ampelopus family, if I'm not mistaken, is like 23 different species. I repeat, species. There's a difference between the species and the genos. 
You can have fish in the same genus, which is in the same family, but separate species. The labiatums is in the Ampelopus family, but it's not a, a Centronellum's genus. So if you have what you call a labiatums red devil, and it's crossed with a Centronellum's, that is considered a hybrid, people. That is considered a hybrid. It's not a line bred. It's not a cross line breed. It is a hybrid. Now, for example, Miss Pearl, she has one of the gene, one of the species of Bob Midas in her genomes and an orange Centronella Midas in her genomes. That is a cross line breed. It's not a hybrid. It's a cross line breed because at the end of the day, you still have a Midas. That's why she's sporting those bars. That explains a little bit on that. I'll elaborate on it uh, in another video because I don't have time to elaborate on it right now. So I'm going to show you that chart that illustrates the difference between the snouts of the labianums and the centronellas. Hopefully that answers your question, Big Kev. Because Big Kev wanted to know the difference. And uh, I'm telling you, honestly, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube and this friends that I know personally that have hybrids in their tank. It's hard to find purebred Midas like these. I know he's not sporting this huge knuckle hump as usual, but this is an awesome specimen. And I'm letting you get to see him when he's not looking at his very best and Miss Pearl, because Miss Pearl gets a huge hump on her head as well. And they still look good and they still pure Midas people. They do not have lips that come to a point. I'm telling you now, if you purchase some Midas from a pet store, a good chance they're hybrids. If you purchase Midas from some distributors online, it's a good chance they're hybrids. When you purchase Midas from me, guaranteed purebred Midas. And also, I may let you see a couple of my um, bar Midas. They've been going at it for a while. I think the, the male and female are uh, about to spawn in this this 75 grow out tank. They're about uh, four inches Four to five inches. I'll let you guys check those out as well on this video Here's a look And my bar Midas my big male monstrous 13 inches Big Casanova. And as you can see, muscular snout, muscular body, and it's rounded. It doesn't come to a point. Big old knuckle hump on his head. This is my Amarillo. She's a different variant of a Midas, a Bar Midas. But still a Midas. Is my isolators over here with Big King Bobo. As you can see, look at their mouths, look at their profile. Their mouths are short, rounded. It doesn't come to a point. That's how you know they're true Midas. Just wanted you guys to get a look at that. And let me take you up here to the chart. This illustrates the difference between labianums and Midas. Labianums A, Midas B. Look at that snout, rounded. Labianums, or some hybrids that's crossed with Midas and labianums, snout looks more like this. And I know you guys have witnessed wild caught labianas with huge lips. And their lips would look would, would betray more in this illustration. If I had an illustration of a wild caught uh, labianas. Because they have huge lips. But still, to the fact, Midas, their lips never come to a point. Their snout never come to a point. That's how you tell the difference. Centralellums. 
and labianums have been hybridized for more than 30 years now. They have been hybridized as long as I've been in a hobby. People, has, people have been hybridizing these two species because they couldn't tell the difference. Now, I don't see why they can't tell the difference. I can tell the difference, but you know, a lot of people, it may be confusing. And next, I'm gonna show you why I am so successful at breeding purebred cichlids and what helps me out, how I keep record of my, my cichlids and their breeding habits and their DNA and genetic traits. If you will, YouTube family, allow me to elaborate a little bit more on the differences between the labianums, red devil, true red devil, and the centinellums or Midas complex. These are two separate species. This is a um, picture of a Midas cichlid, a true Midas cichlid. This book whew, is one of my favorites. This is, matter of fact, this is in my top 10 favorite cichlid books. Cichlids of North and Central America by none other than Don Cockle. He autographed this book for me as well. I may have shown you guys a video of the uh, autograph, but I'll let you see it. That's Don's signature. That was a few years ago when I met him at the uh, CCA meeting. But let me not get off track. Look at that pearl white Midas. This is a nice orange Midas. Now, like I showed you in the a little earlier in this video series, my orange mitis and my bob mitis, how their mouth is rounded and it's the indenture it comes in. It's hard to find purebred mitis like this, people. It, it really is because a lot of these mitis have been hybridized for so long. I told you for over 30 years. 
they have been hybridized with this species, the labianums. They're both in the Ampelopus family, as you can see. And you can find them in just about every area swimming alongside one another. You know, Guatemala, El Salvador, the Pacific Slopes. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, Nicaragua or Nicaragua. Um, Costa Rica. You can find these cichlids swimming alongside one another. And they don't hybridize in nature. Only when they're introduced in an aquarium and someone doesn't know the difference and they have the two species that they hybridize. But you have a lot of people on YouTube sporting these Midas cichlids saying they're Midas and Labianum cichlids saying they're Labianums and they're really hybrids. And I say they're hybrids because they're two separate species. Yes, they're in the same genus family, but they're two separate species within that family. Now that they're, they're not even in the immediate family together. So you may want to do your research, people. And let me show you exactly what I was talking about earlier when I was showing you the graph. This is my book. This is my pedigree book. Yes, it has been updated in... in um, I have been incorporating new stuff and new information in this book, but I had this book for 20 years. This is not the original copy, but this is an updated copy. But the information is original, and I had it for over 20 years. And this is my pedigree book. This is the book that helps me keep track of all my cichlids. And then this is some of the information that's in this book. DNA characteristics, that chart. Of course, I have the pedigree certificate chart. I'm showing you blank pages. I have a lot of pages that are filled, but I'm showing you blank pages so you can get a, a clear-cut idea of the type of information that I keep on my cichlids. And I've been keeping this information on my cichlids for decades. Here's the five-generation chart. So when once a fish reach five generations, I jot all the information down in this book. My Midas, my orange Midas complex are about to reach five generations. I just showed you fourth generation fry now. My Bob Midas also are about to reach five generations. My Dovis has surpassed five generations. My Pyro Trimax has surpassed five generations as well. Here goes some of the information on my Pyro Trimax. Let me show you some other stuff I have in here. The DNA graph. This is why my fish would never quit. Let me go in the front. So you guys can see in depth. Here's the pedigree chart. Here's the family tree. Also, I read certain books on genetics. Genetics for dummy. I have some more books over there. I have a whole lot of literature over there in my library on cichlids. And I used all that information and placed it in my own book that I have that we that I will be dropping real soon. This book will be coming out real soon. Skip's Guide to Keeping Real Hard Cichlids. Whoo! I have some top-notch information in that book. But this just to give you guys an idea of what I study each and every day. Thank you for your time.